Hey, what's going on guys? So, have you ever watched a movie, seen a familiar actor in it, and been all like, Oh man, I know that face. Where do I know that person from? Duh! Well, this new series I'm piloting will aim to answer that question. My plan is to go through some very well-known films you likely have seen a million times and show you who every actor in the movie is, who they are and what they're known for. Because you might be surprised just how lush the careers are of actors with even the smallest of parts. And Star Wars, I think, is a good place to start. For these films are packed with famous names and cameos. And I am convinced that I am going to blow your mind here. Because there's some very famous people in these films that you have seen many times and you likely have never recognised them. Or there might be some lesser known actors you'll see in this video and you'll be like, Wait, that person was also in this thing? Huh. So best I show rather than tell, so let's begin with Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. With all due respect, the ambassadors for the Supreme Chancellor wish to board immediately. So playing these Republic cruise pilots is Silas Carson on the left and Brona Gallagher on the right. Gallagher is a prolific Irish singer slash actress. She's been in a ton of stuff like Pulp Fiction and here she is in Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I see two men. Brothers. Not in blood, but in bond. Now, if you're a Star Wars nerd and you don't know who Carson is, this will interest you. Carson is the man behind Jedi Ki Adi Mundi and Newt's Gunray. Yeah, this is what he looks like without all the prosthetics. Also, kind of bizarre he's in two places at once here, huh? I think this might qualify as suicide. Make yourselves comfortable. My master will be with you shortly. Now, TC-14 is voiced by Scottish film and stage actress Lindsay Duncan. She's been in a ton of films and shows like the Oscar-winning Birdman. And I'm going to close your play. Would you like to know why? Because yeah. I hate you. Also, remember that green leader pilot from Return of the Jedi? Three of them coming in, 20 degrees. Well, that's actor Hilton McRae, who is Lindsay Duncan's husband. Such a cute couple. Master Yoda said I should be mindful of the future, but not at the expense of the moment. Of course, we have our leads, Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson, both extremely well-known actors today, but it might interest you to know how they got their start. Neeson's first acting role was that of Jesus Christ in the 1978 movie Pilgrim's Progress. Father. It's funny because it's Obi-Wan that gets all the memes about looking like Jesus. Yep, you, you sure you don't want to change your messiah there, internet? <sighs> and McGregor, who, fun fact, is the nephew of Dennis Lawson, the man who played Wedge Antilles in the original trilogy, got his acting debut on the small screen. One of his very first roles was in the 1993 four pat television series Scarlet and Black, acting alongside Rachel Weisz. Mamzelle, I pledge to you eternal secrecy. All that has transpired will be consigned forthwith to the Sea of Forgetfulness. The Chancellor should never have brought them into this. Kill them immediately. Playing Palpatine is Scottish actor Ian McDermott, a prolific theatre actor, joining the Royal Shakespeare Company in 1974 and acting alongside several legendary names like Ian McKellen and Judi Dench. He is a farmer that hanged himself. <laughs> On the expectation of plenty. Oh. His movie exploits are too notable outside of Star Wars, but here he is in Sleepy Hollow. You have moved the body? I did. You must never move the body. Why not? Because. What is going on down there? We lost the transmission, sir. So this is crazy, the voice of this Neimoidian here is provided by Amanda Lucas, one of George Lucas's daughters, who has a live action cameo later on during the pod race scene. Also worth noting that Amanda had a brief stint as an MMA fighter. I think I just keep doing what I'm doing and, you know, keep winning fights and keep winning them decisively and showing that I'm, you know, the real deal and that I'm here to stay. I would pay big money to see her kick the shit out of some toxic Star Wars fans. The Senate it's will too never. Late now. Do you think she suspects an attack? 
So this Neymardian, canonically known as Rune Harko, is voiced by James Taylor, who's done minor work on various television series over the years. Here he is in the very early days of the Australian soap Neighbours. Lorraine isn't going to marry you. I can't say I'm sorry. In fact, I'm delighted. For all our sakes. Check the transmission generator. So here we have a cameo. This guard is played by Roman Coppola. Yeah, Coppola. He's the son of Francis Ford Coppola. And he's had a hell of a career himself as a screenwriter for films like Moonrise Kingdom and Isle of Dogs. And for directing the award-winning Mozart in the Jungle. And you might be wondering, Sophia Coppola is his sister, right? And you are correct. And she makes a cameo in The Phantom Menace 2 as one of Amidala's handmaidens. Sophia is of course known for her directorial endeavours in films like Marie Antoinette and Lost in Translation. A communications disruption can mean only one thing, invasion. So this gentleman is film and stage actor Oliver Ford Davies. Like McDiarmid, he's also a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company. He's also been in a ton of films and shows. Here he is in Game of Thrones. Like many, he has a brief stint in that show. And he also had the honour of playing the Archbishop of Canterbury. In Johnny English. Do you, or do you not, have tattooed on your bottom the words Jesus is coming, look busy. Are you insane? The Senate would revoke their trade franchise and they'd be finished. So quick question, do you know what Captain Panaka's first name is? It's Quash. Seriously, that's his name, Quash. Now, if you're wondering, that name derives from the name of Panaka's actor. Hugh Quashi, another Royal Shakespeare Company member, but British audiences will know him best for his role on the medical drama series Holby City. Oh, and you might also know him as the immortal sword fighter Sunder from Highlander. The gathering is here. <laughs> Time's almost caught us, my friend. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. So Natalie Portman, of course, plays Queen Amidala, later became a very famous actress, but Phantom Menace was far from her first role. You might be familiar with her film debut in Leon the Professional, but did you also know that before becoming an actress, Portman was part of a kid's pop group? But not just any pop group, an environmental pop group. Ah! I see the Now this is Natalie all grown up. They grow up so fast. Either choice presents great danger to us all. And many of you will know that Kira Knightley plays Amadala's bodyguard double. Also became very well known, though like Portman, this wasn't her first acting gig either. Here she is at about age nine in an episode of the police procedural series, The Bill. He set traps for us. M my mates were chicken. They didn't want to go in. What you did? I had to. Mr. called Jad and Binks. Mr. your humble servant. That won't be necessary. Oh, but it is. It is demanded by the gods, it is. Ah, Jar Jar, voiced and motion captured by Ahmed Best. Recently, Best hosted a Star Wars themed game show for kids called Jedi Temple Challenge. And believe it or not, despite the backlash he received, he went on to voice Jar Jar in future Star Wars projects and even voiced him in Robot Chicken. So burn your face? Ah! Jar Jar! Any problem? What's that happened to you? Uh... <laughs> no, again, Jar Jar. You are going to the bosses. You are a big doo doo this time. So Captain Tarpals here is voiced by Welsh actor Steve Spears. He's appeared in films like Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and Aragon. The king strip, best cut there is. The fat just melts into the meat. Be gone with him. So Boss Nass is voiced by the one and only Brian Blessed who's a very well-known television presenter and actor in the UK. You might know him from Black Adder or Flash Gordon, but American audiences might recognize him better as the voice of Clayton in Disney's Tarzan. Professor, you are here to find gorillas, not indulge some girlish fantasy. Mm -hmm. 
So, I'm unable to pinpoint where he is in this scene, but amongst all the extras here, Nathan Hamill is amongst them, the son of Mark Hamill. Apparently he plays some kind of law clerk here. Uh, being marched off by battle droids. So there's one long shot that they take from the stairs where they have the yeah. celebration at the end. So this droid is voiced by Peter Saravinovich, who also voices this Gungan. There's a coming! But he also has a more notable role in this movie. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge and cheese. <laughs> yeah, he dubs over Ray Park as the voice of Darth Maul. And apparently he was going to return as Maul in Solo. Though Disney decided to give all future Maul roles to Sam Witwer, who voices him in all the animated shows. Anyway, Serafinovich might look familiar to you. Here he is in Shaun of the Dead. It's fucking Sunday. And I've got to go to fucking work in four fucking hours because every other fucker in my fucking department is fucking ill. Now can you see why I'm so fucking angry? And here he is in Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of a-holes. As for Ray Park himself, you might know him as Toad from X-Men, Snake Eyes from the G.I. Joe movies, and he also had the dubious honor to star in Ballistic X vs. Sever, otherwise known as the worst reviewed movie of all time on Rotten Tomatoes. We've lost contact with our tactical unit. Then who's manning the assault vehicle? That's what we need to make that float. Shit! Park also cameos elsewhere in the movie as this Naboo soldier. Shield generator's been hit! So playing the pilot here is actor Ralph Brown, who's had roles in films like With Nail and I, Alien 3, and Wayne's World 2. That was quite a show, man. You were at Woodstock? Excellent! What was it like? Well, it rained all morning and then it cleared up in the afternoon. And that's it. I almost remembered something else then, but it's gone. Thank you, R2-D2. So the man inside R2-D2 is the late Kenny Baker. He's appeared in many films like The Elephant Man and Time Bandits. That was no man. That was a supreme being. You mean God? Well, we don't know him that well. We only worked with him. He also played the Ewok, Paplu, in Return of the Jedi. That was the one who stole the speed bike. He also was originally going to play Wicket as well, but he felt ill and so the 11-year-old Warwick Davis got the role. Ah yes, Nubian! We have lots of that. So one Andy Seacombe voices Watto. No money, no parts, no deal. He's penned his own fantasy novels and does occasional acting work in video games and television. For example, here he is in Killing Eve. Hello, Constantine. Do come through. I'm a pilot, you know, and someday I'm going to fly away from this place. Ah, Jake Lloyd. Definitely best known for this role, though he also played Arnold Schwarzenegger's son in the Christmas movie Jingle All The Way. He also had a bit role in an episode of ER. Hey, how you doing there, fella? I puked twice in the waiting room. He's kind of embarrassed. There's six other men in line for the bathroom. Nowadays, though, his life is nothing short of tragic. He was arrested for reckless driving. He allegedly assaulted his own mother. His sister, Madison, who cameos during the parade scene at the end of the movie, tragically lost her life at age 26. And now Lloyd has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. So this is a good one. So Bulba is voiced by Scottish voice actor Lewis MacLeod. You go to Banthapudu. <laughs> who's a talented impressionist and has done a ton of voice roles. He's the current voice of Postman Pat. If you happen to play Theme Park World, he voices the advisor in that game. One of your rides is about to break down. Take cover! And here's an odd one. For several Star Wars games, he had the honor to play the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, so Bulba has provided the voice for Obi-Wan. What? It's not about the mission master. It's something elsewhere, elusive. Oh, my bones are aching. Storms coming up, Annie. You better get home quick. 
So this lady is the late Margaret Towner playing the market vendor Jira. Towner did a bunch of television roles, notably appearing in the Ricky Gervais comedy drama Derek, still acting well into her 90s like a boss. Where did you get your nails done? Did it myself. Really? You're cleverer than me. You can't be very clever then, because I'm thick. Don't think a thick person could do hard. I don't want you to raise. It's awful. I die every time what it makes you do it. So Anakin's mother, Shmi, is played by Swedish actress Pinilla August. August has had a prolific career in many films in Sweden, collaborating many times with director Ingmar Bergman. But one especially interesting role of note from August is from the made-for-TV movie Mary, Mother of Jesus, starring Batman himself, Christian Bale, as JC, and August as Mary of Nazareth. You gave him to me to bring into this world. I try to keep him safe. And here's the weird thing. Not only does August play yet another role as a mother who gives birth with no father, but this made-for-TV movie came out in 1999, the exact same year Phantom Menace came out. Talk about incredibly specific typecasting. Oh, hello, I am C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations. How might I serve you? So many of you will know that 3PO is played by Anthony Daniels. But did you also know that Anthony Daniels once played Legolas? Yeah, that Legolas. Daniels voiced him in the 1978 Ralph Bakshi version of Lord of the Rings. No resting can help your Mr. Frodo now. Only the hands of Elrond in Rivendell can do that. Wow, a real astrodroid. How do you get so lucky? So Anakin's friend Kitster is played by Dhruv Chanchani, who now works at a web design company. He still does interviews from time to time about his time on set, including this one where they were kind enough to make him a custom Funko Pop for his character. This is amazing. <laughs> Things I never thought I would see in my life. My oh. own bobblehead. Oh, no, you're okay, Annie. <laughs> Did you know that's Warwick Davis playing that alien? Yeah, and that's not the only cameo he makes in this movie. Here he is during the pod race scene. <laughs> It might also interest non-UK viewers that Davis has had game show hosting duties on British television, most recently hosting Tenable on ITV. Hello and welcome to Tenable, the show where naming a top 10 can win you a top cash prize. You've been working on that thing for years. That there is George Lucas's other daughter, Katie Lucas. Fans of the Clone Wars TV show will have a lot to thank her for, as she went on to help write several episodes for it. The best thing about Lucasfilm is that we really are a family, and I know I'm not just saying that because I am family with George. It's fun to like be in a room with a bunch of people that you don't know, and by the end, you guys are like best friends. It's never gonna run. This girl's name is Megan Udall. Information on her is scarce, but she apparently grew up to work as an accountant, working as the payroll accountant on Rise of Skywalker. Come on, let's go and play ball. Keep racing, Annie. You're gonna be Bug Squad. And this kid's name is Oliver Walpole, who is the son of Peter Walpole, the film's production designer. Turns out Oliver followed his father's footsteps. For example, he worked as an assistant set decorator on the Witcher TV series. That's absolutely right. And a big turnout here from all corners of the Outer Rim territories. Fode and Bede here are voiced by Greg Proops and Scott Capuro who originally weren't joined together. Yeah, the two were planned to be fully practical aliens made up with makeup, but then in post they decided to go the fully CG route. Anyway, Kapuro is an American comedian with some film roles like here in Mrs. Doubtfire. The man has 5 o'clock shadow at 8.30 a.m. and you're worried about strings? And Proops you might know from his appearances on Whose Line Is It Anyway? The announcer in the Wii game Mad World. Greetings, Gore Sport fans! It's a beautiful evening on Jefferson Island, just perfect weather for our unwilling contestants to compete in the Varigan City Death Watch. And is one of the voices of Bob the Builder. Today's the day we're gonna build you all a shelter to sleep under, too. <laughs> 
So Bib Fortuna here is played by a different person from Return of the Jedi. This is Matthew Wood, who works as a sound editor for many Star Wars projects. He also portrayed Fortuna in The Mandalorian, and also is a talented voice actor, providing the vocals for Odie Mandurell, the battle droids in The Clone Wars, Take this upstairs, and be sure not to drop it. Whoa! Whoa! Kylo Ren in Star Wars Resistance, and for the one and only, General Grievous. I am a little too much for Needless to say, the dude is a legend. <laughs> so Star Wars nerds will recognise Bounty Hunter Aura Singh here, who apparently was going to play a role in Episode 2, but got switched with Zan Wissel for some reason. Though she does get her time to shine in the Clone Wars TV show, and eventually gets offed by Beckett, apparently. You killed Aura Singh. Pushed her. Pretty sure the fog killed her. Anyway, she's played for all but two seconds here by model Michonne Boriag, who apparently is good friends with Amy Allen and Shannon McRandall. Allen, who later plays Jedi Ayla Sakura, and McRandall, who portrays fan favourite Mara Jade in photos taken for Star Wars Cards games. Look, here she is with Mark Hamill. How's that for a peek into an alternate universe? Welcome, Your Highness. It's an honour to finally meet you in person. Valorum, of course, is played by Terence Stamp. Very famous actor, my audience probably will know him best as General Zod in Superman 2. Come to me, son of Jarrell! Kneel before Zod! I do not believe the Sith could have returned without us knowing. Yep, Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu needs a no introduction. Apparently, Jackson is a huge Star Wars fan and was ecstatic to get the role. And they were very accommodating for him. The prop department were kind enough to engrave BMF on his lightsaber hilt. Which one is it? It's the one that says bad motherfucker. Now, I was wanting to show you all what Jackson's very first film role was, but here's the thing. I literally can't. The film is called Together for Days, also known as Black Cream. It came out in 1972 and starred Clifton Davis and Lois Childs, Childs being the Bond girl from Moonraker. But the thing about this movie is that it's lost. There's no known copies of it anywhere. Apparently, somebody bought a film print of it for $725 in 2017, but whoever that was hasn't shared it with anyone. So as of today, it remains elusive. Oh. Trained as a Jedi, you request for him, hmm? Yoda's voice and puppeteering work is provided by the one and only Frank Oz. Now, Oz has too many voice and puppeteering roles to count, but amongst them are Fungus in Monsters, Inc. You're still behind, Randall. You know, maybe I should realign the screen intake Just valve. Just get me another door! Ah, the door, yes, door! Many of the Muppets, like Fozzie Bear and Miss Piggy. Remember this! <laughs> And also many characters in Sesame Street, like Cookie Monster. I will be uh, uh, quiet like this. And then uh, you talk like that, you go crazy. There. <laughs> <laughs> Boys here to see Padme. Let him in. So this is another very well-known actor with a bizarrely small part. This guard is played by Dominic West, who's been in a ton of stuff like The Wire, 300, and the 2018 live-action Tomb Raider, where he played Lara's father. I began searching the world, desperate for a, a hint of another realm, for proof that the supernatural is real. I'm sorry, Annie, but Pat is not here right now. Who is it? Anakin Skywalker, to see Padme, your highness. Playing the handmaiden Rabe is Brazilian actress and model Carol Cristina da Silva, an avid puppeteer apparently, and now runs her own interview focused YouTube channel. May the force be with you. <laughs> this is incredible. We recommend a commission be sent to Naboo to ascertain the truth. So this name Odeon is voiced by Toby Longworth, who also voiced the alien merchant who demanded Jar Jar pay for the food he ate. Longworth's done a ton of acting work, like here he is in the IT crowd. Are you we very old? Old. Let's move on! <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> and here is his voice in the horror game Amnesia, a machine for pigs. I held your hand and watched the blood pool between your legs. 
You lived long enough to see Edwin, but not Enoch. I will take care of them, my love. I promise you this. The Congress of Malastare concurs with the Honorable Delegate from the Trade Federation. A commission must be appointed. So this alien from Malastare is voiced by a guy called Mark Silk, who's done commercial voice work portraying characters like Scooby-Doo and Johnny Bravo. scooby doo be doo He's done TV show announcer work on shows like Ant and Dex, Saturday Night Takeaway. Jump on board, take a ride, that's Ant McCartlin. Jump on board, feel the high, that's Declan Donnelly. Oh, and he also does the voice for the American version of Bob the Builder. Windows and a front door. It's a house. Who'd have thought Phantom Menace had two Bob the Builders in it? Order! So the Senate speaker here, Mass Emeda, is played by Jerome St. John Blake. Blake had the honor of playing a whole bunch of aliens in the prequels, including all these guys. He also did standing acting for the film's pre-visual work. Our fate is in your hands. So in this scene, you might be surprised to hear that Thorin Oakenshield is in it. Yeah, actor Richard Armitage is right here as one of the Naboo star pilots. Armitage went on to do a ton of stuff, so many roles in so many television series, but my audience might recognize him most as the voice of Trevor Belmont in the Castlevania Netflix series. Dracula taught a human woman how to be a doctor. <laughs> what was first, bloodletting? <laughs> Fighters, straight ahead. Roger Bravo, Lita. This is actor Clarence Smith. He has another Shakespearean actor, but he's also done lots of TV work, like as this barrister on Coronation Street. You love your wife, while freely admitting to an affair with your babysitter. A woman you claim to have, um, cared for. What's that? It's going up from the inside. So this female pilot is played by actress Celia Imrie. She's been in many films and shows like The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel and Bridget Jones's Diary. I was just saying, Jeffrey didn't contact you either to tell you that the Tarts and Vickers concept had gone out of the window. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, right. Lovely dress. Very exotic. And she was a long-time collaborator with comedian Victoria Wood. This place is a disgrace. Filthy, unhygienic, the food's not safe to eat, and the staff are all positively diseased. Two pound ninety-five pence, please. On the other hand, it's very cheap and easy to park. <laughs> Now that poor pilot was ILM visual effects supervisor John Noel, who has done tons of visual effects work over the years, and along with his brother Thomas, created a little program called Photoshop. You might have heard of it. Well, Photoshop's become an integral tool in all filmmaking. <laughs> now this is interesting. This elated pilot is played by actor Benedict Taylor. Now, do you remember that green twi'lek that gets eaten by the Rancor in episode 6? <laughs> well, that was actress Femi Taylor. Yeah, these two are brother and sister. To answer the question you all have in your head, Femi was adopted. Now, Taylor's done lots of television work himself, and he has worked with Lucas before. Here he is in an episode of The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Now, oh, Lieutenant, unless you're dressed for a masquerade, we fully expect to be saluted. Your boldness has saved our people, Your Majesty. It's you who should be congratulated. So two cameos in this scene. This guy is longtime Star Wars producer Rick McCallum. It's so dense. Every single image has so many things going on. And the guy to the left of him is longtime Star Wars sound designer Ben Burt, who might interest you to know did the voice for Wally. Wally's voice started with recordings I would make of myself. And then it's analyzed and broken up into its component parts within the computer. Also, Bert has cameoed before in Star Wars. This is him in Return of the Jedi. Free! <laughs> and Solo killed Wally. Unbelievable. So this animal handler is a guy called Dan Madston, who is the former president of the official Star Wars fan club. 
I guess the dude did such a good job they offered him a cameo. <laughs> And finally, there's a notable actress who appears in the crowd here. Right here. Apparently that's Sally Hawkins, famous for her roles in Blue Jasmine, Godzilla, and The Shape of Water. I haven't ever seen it. You're in a Star Wars movie and you haven't seen it? No. That might no. be a first. <laughs> That'll make Star Wars fans, and they're intense, that will make them angry. I know, I know. I should How dare said... you? No, they'll be, they'll be uh, very angry about that. I've seen it. I have seen it. <laughs> so there we go. Kind of interesting, right? I think I like the idea of making more informative videos like this. So if you'd like me to explore all the actors of another film, please let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, check out my channel for more videos from me. Like if you like, and I shall see you in the next one. Peace.